Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a black Templar's Primaris Lieutenant. Now he's originally a Dark Angel, I've trimmed off some of the symbols so one of the shoulder pads looks a bit rough, but you'll get the idea from the paint. So first off on this one, we're going to be using Vallejo White, but any white will do. This we're just going to be using this on the robes and on the shoulder pads, maybe a few of the smaller details. But the main thing that you want to do is make sure that you get the shoulder pads and the robes in a nice smooth white colour, so you may have to do a couple of layers. This white is notoriously bad for going over every colour, if you ask me. So you've just given them a nice clear coat of white, and once you've finished doing that, we can move on to the next one. With the white finished, we're now going to move on to Citadel Rakarth Flesh. So we're going to paint any kind of bone areas on it, any seals, like the parchments on the seals, any of the little scrolling and things like that that you get on the armour. Now we'll start painting the chest eagle here in Rakarth Flesh, because on the Warhammer Wiki it does show it as Rakarth Flesh. But because I'm painting this one up from a brother, it's going to be actually repainted gold a little bit further on. So you will realise this gets changed to gold, so if you want to do it in gold, don't paint it Rakarth Flesh. Or if you want to keep it as the bone colour which is on the, the wiki, then crack on because that's fine too. Now we're going to start working on some of the gold areas. For this we're using Citadel Retributor Armour as the base. So I'm going to be painting the hilt of his sword, some of the smaller details. I don't think I actually paint the chest eagle gold until a bit later on, so if you want to paint the chest eagle gold you can do. There's a few little details that I paint gold on here. You've got like the little thing holding the sword hanging off his waistband. A few little details on the plasma pistol on the sword. Once you finish this, on to the next colour. Next colour that we're going to use is Citadel and my fist on red. I'm going to use this to do his eyes and also the purity seal on his arm. Oh, and the little red book on the back as well, can't forget that. I'm not sure why, but whenever painting books on things, there will always be a red covered book. Couldn't tell you why, just one of those things that I always do. And with the red finished, on to the next colour. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to use this to do the holster and some of the pouches on his belt. Mournfang Brown always seems to be a little bit streaky to me, but um, if you do end up with a few streaks on it, you can just go back, give that another layer, that should be fine. And finish this one, and on to the next layer. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Araman Blue. I'm going to use this to do the coils on the plasma pistol, so you've got ones on the bottom here, and ones on the top. I'm not really sure if the bottom ones are meant to be coils, but they're getting painted up that way anyway. It's a nice little effect you can do. To brighten up the miniature. Now we're going to use Citadel Zerius Purple. I'm going to actually do the sword blade in this. Now there's a tutorial on how to do the sword blade the way I'm doing it here, which I'll link up. It's the kind of blade that I did on my Sons of Horus. Our kid's doing on his Black Templars as well. So I figured keep them all together, they can all have the same one. Now I'm going to work on the silvers using Vallejo Model Air Chrome. As always, a wonderfully bright metallic. Plenty of pigments in there so it covers absolutely everything. Really, really good paint this. 
Not too sure what it's like hair brushing, but painting on with a brush, it's absolutely superb. So you're going to be doing the plasma pistol here, a few of the details like the tubes on his helm, and you've got like the exhausts on the power pack. The little filament kind of things on his power sword and also some of the nooks and scratches in his armour. We're going to start working on the white now and for this we're going to be using the Citadel Contrast Apocalypse 3 White. As always I did used to use the Vallejo Wash Pale Grey which is much the same thing but the contrast I think just edges it a little bit. It's got a little bit more pigment and it really does look good when you're painting onto the white. It makes painting white so much easier. For me at least anyway, if you're painting miniatures up for your army, then it's ideal I think. If you may be going for a really, really good paint job, you probably want to build the layers with just paint. But if you're just painting up your army, I'd say it's spot on. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to use this on the Mournfang Brown and the Gold. I really do like the look of this when you paint it onto the gold, it gives it a nice dark colour in the recesses when you build it up. It just does give it a really, really nice colour to it, I think. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Duty Violet. We're just going to use this on his eye lenses, the grip of the sword, the book and the purity seal. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this on the scroll on his shoulder there and on the parchment for the purity seal. A nice little cat hair attached to the brush there because the cats get cat hair on everything. I'm sure everyone with a cat will know. Especially this time of year, it's starting to get warmer, so all the hair just appears absolutely everywhere. Now we're going to use Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this to paint on all of the silvery areas. Now the bits that I'm doing on the chest eagle there are the bullet holes which I've carved into it. Now as you probably know this used to be a Dark Angel's primary lieutenant. So I've carved off some of the iconography to use them as a Black Templar. Next is Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to be using this just to do the coils on the plasma pistol. A very quick layer on this one. Like so. Continuing with the robes now, we're going to go and use some Vallejo White. The great thing about the contrast paint is it shades it just enough that you can return with the white, paint the white on, leaving the contrast in the recesses and any of the areas where it's a bit thicker you can just gently go around the edges of that with a bit of white on your brush, kind of blend it into the grey there and it does look really really good once it's done so it's minimal effort for a decent result. The contrast paint is something I want to have a play around with a bit more in the future but the white one I really really do like the effects that you can get on your miniatures. That's what the cloak's looking like now, or the robes I should say. But for three layers, white, apothecary white, and white again, that's pretty damn good. So next up we're going to be using Citadel Mephiston Red. As you can see we're going to be painting this for the stripe on top of the helm to show he's a Primaris Lieutenant. We're also going to be using it to paint the book on his hip and the purity seal. 
I'm just going to do a separate section to paint the eye lenses and do them separately from the rest of the red. So returning to my fist on red again, I'm going to be using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush to paint these eye lenses. You want to make sure that you're leaving some druchy violet within the recesses around the edge of the lens and just get that red colour back on them. Next up we're going to add a little bit of white to the Mephist on red. I'm going to do the first highlight. Now we're doing the first highlight on maybe the back kind of third, stroke 50% of the lens. You want to be doing it in a kind of crescent so it's thicker at the top at the back of the lens and thinner the closer it gets to the front. Now we're going to add a little bit more white and you want to be doing the same kind of pattern but smaller, about 50% of the previous layer. So you get those highlights about halfway down the last highlight. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the mix. I'm going to give one final highlight to those lenses. Try and get it on camera. Eh? Like so. Now I'm just going to use pure white to do two little dots, one on each front of the lens and then two little lines as a really final highlight to those areas that we've been highlighting on those lenses. Right, that's a shot there, sorry. That is the finished eye lenses. So now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red and also a little bit of Citadel Squig Orange. Now we've mixed a bit of the Squig Orange with the Mephist on red. We're just going to highlight little bits on the grip of the sword, on the little book at the back and also on the stripe on his head there. Then we're going to use a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright, mix that in with the previous mix, and just give one final highlight on the same parts again. Like so. Now we're going to highlight the purity seal on his shoulder there, so we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Wazdaka Red. Just highlight those top sides of that, so it looks like the light's shining down from above and catching that, lighting up all the edges a little bit. Like so. Now we're going to move on to the gold again, so we're going to reapply some of the base coat, the Citadel Retributor Armour. So the main thing you want to be doing with this is getting the coat back on, making sure you leave the Agraxair shade in the recesses. A little chest eagle here, the reason it's been blown apart is because one have cut off those swords from the centre of them. It's left a little bit of damage at the top there, so a few bullet holes there. Looks like you've been shot, and you don't have to worry about where it's been cut off a bit badly. Next color we're going to use to highlight the gold is Citadel Liberator Gold. You just want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch it. If you shine a light down from above, have a look at where it catches, and try and highlight those areas of it. It gives quite a nice look to it as though it's being naturally illuminated. Doesn't look like any parts of it are glowing, they're just catching the light, or if you're doing any extra bits where the light's reflecting onto them from a different angle. 
So you want to be doing the sort of top edges of these feathery parts, and the outsides of them. I'd like to be striking them. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold. I'm just going to do one final highlight on all the gold, so you want to try and get the ridges on the pommel of his sword there, any of the edges for the skull or the hilt, highlighting the top edges of the parts on the Aquila on his chest, and any of the other gold details, just highlighting the top edges of them, or the extreme edges of them, just to give them that really shiny finish. Next up, it's Citadel Araman Blue, and this we're going to be using on the plasma pistol. So you're going to reapply that to each of the coils. I'm going to make this look like it's glowing with a really quick and easy method. I'll link up again here. There's a video tutorial on how to do this kind of plasma ghost. So I'll link that below, or above, or both. You can see how that gets done. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white to the Araman Blue. And you're going to use this to make the coils slightly lighter, maybe about 80% of the coils slightly lighter here. If you do happen to blotch over any of the Drachenhof Nightshade, you can just reapply that at the end, that's not a problem, use a thin brush and just paint on the Drachenhof Nightshade and the gaps, that'll work fine. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix, and we're going to do about 80% of the bit that we've just highlighted. This starts bringing the glow up, so you can see that there, it's going from Araman blue up to a lighter blue. That just gives it the effect that it's glowing from the middle. Again, we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. We're going to do about 80% of that area again, mainly towards the middle of the coils. Same again here. Once you've played around with this for a bit, master the knack of it, it's so easy to do. It does give the plasma coils a really nice look to them. So now we're going to be using pure Vallejo white. I'm just going to be painting the very centre parts of the coils just to give them a nice white glow. And that is the finished plasma gun parts. Now we're going to go onto the pouches and the holster. So going back to Citadel Mournfang Brown. This is just generally reapplying this to most of the pouches, leaving the Agrax shade around all the clips and the buttons, and also in any of the areas where, for example, on the holster, you've got ridges, really, really faint ridges on there. You just want to paint the tops of those and leave the shaded areas and the recesses. Now we come back to highlight this now. So we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Ricard Flesh to the Mournfang Brown. We're just going to highlight the edges. Using these like as though it's a leather holster and leather pouches. They're going to have been scuffed on the edges from battle or general wear and tear around the top where the pistol is being pulled out all the time. Around the little latches, the corners, the edges, that kind of thing and any little ridges if the leather's creased a lot, then that would chafe. And once you've finished highlighting that, go on to the next layer. We're going to add more Ricard Flesh to the previous mix, and we're going to do one final highlight. Here I'm going to be trying to do a little bit of a texture thing by just dragging the brush one way so it leaves slight ridges in the colour. Now 
a little bit off camera there, sorry. Like so. Next up, we're going on to the armour. So we're using the black first. It's the layer of black I'm using, but any black will do. I'm just touching up all the areas where I've got other paint onto the black before we start highlighting it. So it's just tidying up the armour here. Even the silver in the recesses where you've got the cuts and the grooves. For making sure all the armour plates are back in black. So now we're going to use some Vallejo German Grey to highlight the black. Again, it's thinking about where the light's going to be catching it if you're getting the light directly from above. So you want to be highlighting all those top edges, like the top of the kneecap, the top of the little trim on the kneecap, the top of his thigh, the top of the back of the leg. Preferably not the cloak or the robes like I've just done there. But basically all the areas that are going to be catching more light than the rest, you want to be highlighting those. Once you've finished off that layer, you're going to come back with Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. And you're just going to be trying to do the edges and some little parts of the lighter areas. The main thing for doing it this way is so as not to make it look grey. Because one of my pet peeves is when you have miniatures that are meant to be black and they end up coming out grey. It just looks a little bit too... I don't know to say. It's a, I, I just don't like the look of it if they're, they're too highlighted. So doing it this way it gives one highlight where it's slightly lighter than the black and then you've got the edges with the Mechanicus standard grey. Once you've finished that one we're going to move on to Citadel Ricard Flesh and start doing the parchments and the scroll on his other shoulder pad. If you can hear any noise in the background, apologies for that. It's really, really hot when I'm recording. So I've got the windows open to try and get a breeze to blow through. There isn't much of a breeze coming through, but there is lots of noise from people who are enjoying the heat outside. So that layer done, we're now going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Rakar flesh. We're just going to start highlighting the scroll on the shoulder pad and, of course, the parchment on the purity seal. Try and put some pages on the book there. And finally, we're going to add a little tiny bit more white to the previous mix and just do one final highlight on the scroll and the parchment. like so. Okay, now we're going to start working on some of the detailing. So we're going to use some Vallejo Black. Now I have added a little spot of water to this just so it's a little bit thinner because if you're using the normal consistency paint you'll tend to find it dries out while you're trying to do the, the freehand and the detail work like this. So I've added a little spot of water just to thin it slightly. And then we're using this just to do the details on the parchments of his purity seal and just to write the name on the scroll work here. Now I always start the writing for the scroll work in the middle because that way you can kind of work it out equally on each side. If you start at one end you could finish short or end up without enough letters or space to fit the letters on rather. Again we're going to be using black here to start the Black Templars badge on the shoulder looks very much like a Maltese cross kind of shape. So what we're going to be doing here is drawing a black square on the shoulder pad. And then we're going to be tweaking that with some white to get that to 
the right shape. There will be a video of how to paint this up completely start to finish. I'll be going up this coming Sunday. For the time being, you'll get the rough idea of how it works from this. Once you've got that nice and square, you can just tidy up any edges and then move on to the next section. Okay, so now we're moving on to Vallejo White. And we're going to start shaping the square into the Black Templar's badge. So I find the easiest way to do this is to do a diagonal line from one corner to the other. If the square is slightly off-centre, as it is in this case, you might have to play around with those lines just to make sure that they're in the right place or tweak it a little bit more when you come to the end. So you want to get the cross in there. And as the crosses get to the corners, you want to fan them out a little bit. And start working on it like that. So the badge finished. We're now going to use some apothecary white just so that you can tone down where you've used the white around the badge there. As I say, there is going to be a full start to finish slow time tutorial on how to paint the chapter badge. So if like me, you can't use the decals very well, or the transfers very well, it's a handy way of being able to do it. Okay, so with the chapter badges done on the shoulder pads now, we're going to move on to a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. What we're going to do here is touch up the little cuts and the bullet holes in his armour should add a little bit more model air chrome to them because in some parts it's been gone over with the apothecary white or the colours that have been painting on the shoulder pads just to get them right. We're now going to add a little bit of null oil to them just to get them back up to speed and add some null oil around the bullet holes. So you can see here where you've got the bullet holes in his chest we're just going to put a little bit of null oil onto the gold there to dull them down so there's been a bit of an impact and you've got the kind of spread of carbon on that gold area. I'll link up the battle damage video that I did the other week. So you've got that there. Now we're going to be adding a little bit of Vallejo white to the Citadel Xerius purple that we painted his sword in. And we're going to start painting up his sword. I will link the video to how to paint this up completely here. But basically you're dividing it into sections. I tend to do three sections on each side, so you've got two bits on one part of the blade, which have the lighter colour on, and then one part on the other, so you have three of the just Xerius purple parts on each side of the blade as well. So now that we've done that, we're going to add a little bit more Vallejo white to the previous mix, and we're going to cover about 80% of the highlight that we've just done. That was Ziggy coming in to say hello. Okay, so we're just doing it with straight edges here. I'm actually using the same mix. I'm just smoothing that off and then I'm trying to angle the bottom edges towards the blade of the sword so it's not just straight. You can see adding that in there, how that looks. It will mean that I'm going to go back and use a little tiny bit of the previous mix just to put a similar angle on the initial part too. So now that we've finished that, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White, mix that with the previous mix and start highlighting here. Now it's probably slightly too white this. But what we can do is just use a little bit of a slightly darker shade and just add a thin line towards the end of it. So it's not too much of a contrast with the previous layer. Once more, we're going to add a little bit of white to the previous mix. I'm going to do another layer of highlights on the blade. This is a really quick and easy method of doing this. If you want to spend more time on it and get those changes in colour a lot smoother, that's fine. As I say, doing it for the tabletop, I'll spend a certain amount of time, but I won't go overboard with it because 
at the end of the day, if you're painting a lot of miniatures for your army, you may not have the time to paint every single one of them, spend hours and hours and hours on it. This is just a really quick method. So again, adding some Vallejo white to the mix, we're going to do another highlight on here. Exactly the same as before, leaving a little sliver of the previous colour on display there. Like so. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White and mix that with the previous mix and do one final mix colour on the blade. The colour after this is just going to be pure white. So this is the final one where you've got the Xerius Purple mix going onto the blade. Like so. Now we're just going to use some pure Vallejo White just to start working on the extreme parts of the blade. So we're doing a little highlight on each of these sections just to get it going from the purple to the white and then we'll also be trying to do a little bit of highlighting on the edges of the blade just to give them that nice crisp line going down the sides of it. As I say, we'll link to a video of how to do this. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Zerius Purple just to smooth off those lines where the white lines have maybe encroached onto the darker areas of the blade. It's just to neaten that up. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Drucci Violet, and that is just going to be to darken up sort of the middle areas of the Xerius Purple. You've got the very tip of the blade there, so you've got the extreme white highlight, and then you've got the Drucci Violet adding the very dark highlight to the blade. Now we're going to use some Citadel Nolan Oil. I'm just going to do a little bit on the battle damage of the shoulder pads here. So as I said earlier, I'll link to the battle damage video. That's just to add a little bit more dirt and grime to them to make it look like they have been hit by something. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Agraxa shade. And that is going to be to go around the edges of some of those carbonized bits where maybe a bolt round or something or a las gun or something's shot it. And just a little bit of carbon scoring on the armor, so we're going to add a little tiny bit of that to these areas just to give them a bit more colour. What you can do when you do these, if you have any areas that look like it's slightly too thick when you're putting the blast marks on. You can use a tiny little bit of a layer of white just to tidy that up. Now I'm going to work on the base. So the base here, I don't really go into the base too much. If you want to see a video on how to do these bases, just shout out. It's a really, really quick and easy method of doing a base. But I do quite like them for 40k to look very, very similar. Now I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Ethonian camo shade to do the same. That's just to weather the rock and a bit of the soil there. Like so. And that is the finished Black Templars Primaris Lieutenant. Really, really good model, so if you paint as Dark Angels or Black Templars or whatever, it's a really great model. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.